In our next video, we're going to look at something called the mean free path. Sometimes we like to know how far a molecule can travel in a room or in a box before it hits another molecule. How far does it travel? And so the way to look at it is to say, well, there's molecules going all different directions, and of course, they're going to be constantly colliding with each other. So, so the way we want to look at it is here. What will prevent a molecule from colliding with another molecule? So let's say we have a molecule that has a diameter d traveling in this direction, another molecule with the same diameter traveling this direction. So with other words, the center of mass of the second molecule cannot get any closer than this line right here. And on the other side, it cannot get any closer than this line right there. So what that means is that this diameter of the path that a molecule has to travel without colliding with another molecule is actually twice the diameter of the molecule. So the surface area, if you, if you think, or not the surface, but the cross-sectional area of a molecule, if you cut a molecule in half and you look at the cross-sectional area, the area of a molecule, the area of a single molecule, is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to pi d squared over 4. But if you think about it, you really want to have this entire area free. That would be twice the diameter. So therefore, the diameter of the path that the molecule has to have, so it doesn't collide with another molecule, has to be four times as large. So the area needed is equal to four times that, or pi d squared. Now, with that, let's take a look at this equation right here. So the mean free path is 1 over pi d squared. So the pi d squared simply comes in of the area, cross-section area, of the path the molecule has to have so it doesn't collide with another molecule. Then if we realize that it travels with a particular velocity like that, how much space does the molecule have in this, think of this tube, before it collides with another molecule? Well, that depends upon the density of the molecules. So if we take the total number of molecules and divide it by the volume, we have a measure of the density. So we're going to multiply this times n over v. So now I have this quantity right there. And then if the molecules were stationary, then that would be the space molecules have available to them in the box or in a particular container that has gas. But the molecules aren't stationary, they're actually moving. So it turns out that it actually reduces their available space before they collide by a factor of 1 over the square root of 2. And that then gives us, if we take the inverse of that, that then gives us the length, which is this length right here, that they can travel before they collide with another molecule. So let's say that we have one mole of gas in a container that has a volume of 50 liters. So let's say we have one mole, and the volume, so n equals 1, and the volume is equal to 50 liters, and we want to know uh, what the mean free path is of these molecules before they collide with another molecule. Notice that it's not even dependent on their velocities or the temperature or anything like that, which is kind of interesting. All right, so we need to find out the d for a molecule. So what is the diameter of a molecule? Well, I know that the Bohr radius, and so that is typically a sub naught, which is the radius of a hydrogen atom, that's called the Bohr radius, which is kind of a representative size of, a, of an atom or a molecule, is equal to 0.53 angstroms, which is equal to 0.053 uh, nanometers, nm, which is 0.053 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. A nano is 10 to the minus 9. Okay, so the diameter would be twice that. So I can say that d would be equal to 2a sub naught, which, let's just round it off, is equal to about 1 angstrom or 0 0.1 nanometers. Okay, so now we're ready to plug that in here. We still need to know the number of molecules. Well, I gave you the mole, so the number would be Avogadro's number. All right, that's good. And then the volume, I gave you 50 liters, so we convert that to cubic meters. So now we're ready. 1 over the square root of 2 times pi times the diameter squared, which is uh, 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. We square that 
times the number of molecules, which is Avogadro's number. So it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we divide it by the volume. We said 50 liters, which is 0 0.050 meters cubed. All right. So notice we have meters squared divided by meters cubed in the denominator. It will give us a, a unit of meters. And now I need my calculator. So square root of 2 times pi times 0 0.1 e to the 9 minus, and we have to square that, times 6.02 e to the 23rd, and then divide by 0 0.05 equals, ooh, I was afraid here that I got the wrong answer, but I still have to take the inverse because it's 1 over that, so take the inverse of that, and that's much better. So that gives me an answer of 1.87 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. So almost 2 micrometers. So it's about 2 micrometers. That's hmm, 2 one thousandths of a millimeter. So let's put that into perspective. If we take the width of a piece of paper, and I got a notebook right here, and so let's take the thickness of a piece of paper, like right there, there's the thickness, that is about 100 micrometers. So if we take a sheet of paper and we simply look at the thickness of the piece of paper, that is equal to about 100 micrometers. And so a molecule in a situation where we have one mole in 50 liters, which is about typically half the density of a typical room, the molecules will travel one fiftieth the width or the thickness of a piece of paper before they collide with another molecule. And since they're traveling at speeds of hundreds of meters per second, you can imagine that it, takes, that it doesn't take long before a molecule bounces up against another molecule. Matter of fact, since we mentioned that, let's think about that. We have distance is equal to velocity times time or time is equal to distance divided by velocity. And so if we take, for example, that a molecule travels this far, 1.87 times 10 to the minus 6 meters before it collides with another molecule, and then if its velocity, let's say, is about 450 meters per second, which is the typical velocity of a molecule in a room, 450 meters per second, and remember, I took a density that was about half the normal density, so normally that would be twice as uh, thick, and therefore it only traveled about half as far before it collides. So we have uh, this number divided by 450 equals, and so the time is equal to 4.15 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Those are nanoseconds. So molecules travel for about 4 nanoseconds before they collide with one another. That is amazing. So you can imagine in a room full of gas, molecules are constantly colliding with each other in terms of hundreds of millions of times per second. That's quite amazing. But anyway, here you know, here you now understand the mean free path of a molecule, how to calculate it, what it is, and then at the same time, how long it takes before molecules collide with one another in a typical gas environment.